the text tools within Fusion might be a little more powerful than you think. Today, we're gonna to take a dive at a couple of different tools that you could use to improve the animations of your text within Fusion. So without further ado, let's just jump in. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo sting, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre set tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. Okay, so jumping right into Fusion. I ha already have a little project set up, but we're actually just using the text plus node. If you don't know how to get it, uh, in the uh, default toolbar, it's going to be right here. We can drag that in and that's just going to be a normal text tool. We can come up here and we can just type in some information. The other way that we can uh, get to this is obviously if we right click and we go into tools, this is gonna be considered a generator and it's gonna be the text plus tool. You can also come up to the effects library and then in the tools, come down to generator text plus. Since you know the name of the tool, you can also use the select tool, which is holding down shift and then hitting spacebar and typing in the tool name here. So you just type in text. There are a couple of different text things in here. So you have the text 3D, which we're not gonna be using. We're gonna be using the text plus. Hit enter and then it'll drop it into your project. So that's all we're gonna be using. Uh, but I do have a couple of things already preset up here. The first one we're gonna be looking at is the tab spacing. So if you ever worked with any type of information, maybe you have it in a spreadsheet or a document and there is some type of uh, tab to make two different columns, um, that's kind of what we have here. I pulled this information right off of Zillow and this is just going to be for a house, right? So we have the type of house, a single family home and the all the other information that's here, right? So it's just in the only the only difference between this and you know it just being out is that there's going to be tabs in between both of these, right? So we're just using tab to put in here some information, tab, and then whatever the results of that uh, a category is or whatever, right? So I just copy all of this, drop it right into our node. We're gonna drag it up here to actually view it. When we have the node selected, what you'll see here is we have these uh, dashed lines, right? And those are the different columns. Anytime you hit tab, you'll then get this. What's cool about this is now we can take this and this is in one text tool, you have to remember, is we can now pull these anywhere we want and we can individually move these. Now you might say, okay, well they're center anchored. These are supposed to be two columns that might be butted up against each other. So all we would have to do is come down here to tab spacing. And then in here we have the ability to align. So I could align one one way and then come in here, hit two and align the other one the other way. And we can simply just the on-screen controls, drag these together. And now we have all of the information in a perfect like little column there, right? Or two different columns. You also have the controls down here to move the position, but I feel like the on-screen ones are a little easier unless you're doing some fine tuned stuff, which well, then I would come down here and do that. So that is the first one. I feel like that is very beneficial. You can just simply come into here and we could say uh, YouTube, tab JRTV. And I feel like that is super simple. Instead of making two different text tools, that combined with all of the other stuff that we'll get into in here in a second, it'll really show you the power in just using one text tool node. The next one I thought was actually pretty cool. It's called Text Scramble. As you see, like the fake way of uh, hacking a system where the numbers are changing and then it you know, reveals whatever the information is. So as you can see, I play this through and it comes back to JRTV. Now you can see over here where it's all getting all scrambled up as well. I didn't go through in every frame change what it said. This is a very simply, all you're gonna do is just type it in there and I can actually show you. So let me just show you how this is set up. So we'll just drop it in here. We'll just type in here, whatever our information is, we can make it look really cool. And as you can see over here, this little diamond is lit up. So that means that there is some type of an animation. A lot of people think that these are just signifying keyframes. That is true to an extent, but when it's orange like this, that just means that there is an animation associated with that particular value. So coming back down to the one that we're working on, all we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding in a text scramble modifier. And to do that, we're just going to right click. We're gonna come down here to text scramble. And then now we have this modifier tab that's open here. The other thing that sometimes people get confused is if you don't have the node activated, 
Obviously, you can still come in here and control everything, but the text or the modifier isn't going to be active. You actually have to have the node uh, active or selected to be able to see that. Once we come into here, in here we have whatever we want the final thing to be. And then we uh, have a couple different controls down here. This is just when we do the scramble, what do we want to have? So maybe some people only want to have very specific characters. If you don't want something in here, you can just simply take it all out. And then those things wouldn't be a part of the scramble. And then we have how we want it to be animated. So we would be adding a some type of an animation to this to signify how we want it to be shown. So if I click on this and bring it up here so we can actually see it, as we move this, it's going to be randomizing it. And what I ended up doing here for this one is we just went the opposite way because we wanted it to be a reveal instead of a scramble up. Uh, I just have it start with a value and then as it gets to the end, it's unscrambling it. And I also, you can also add some type of an easing in so the scramble values become less prominent. Um, so it starts off with the whole thing scrambling really, really fast, and then it's only scrambling one or two letter letters by the time it gets to the end by just adding, as you can see here, some easing in, right? Okay, so the next one is going to be adding shading elements. And uh, shading elements does a plethora of different things to make uh, different text actually look pretty cool. In this case, I just put underneath another instance of the letters and with just a different color. And I feel like for some situations that would really make things easy to see. So like maybe I had this on the background of like some sky or something, right? So if I wanted it to still be white text, I could throw this other color below it and it would really help bring it out. The other thing that you could do with this is you could use this as a drop shadow, a very easy way to add a drop shadow. So if I was to flip this color around to black, now we have it there. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can actually see it. Now that we have it there, we could come down to softening, right? And we could put in here, let's put it like a value of three for each one of those. And we can see we can get a little softer. We can then swap that up to like, let's say 30. It's getting a little softer. And then we can also move the location of this over a little bit. So something like that and maybe drop down the opacity on this. And now we have a bit of a drop shadow. If I drop that on, let's say a background that's maybe a brighter color, we'll be able to see that a little bit better. So now if we bring this up a little bit, we can see that we have that drop shadow. Obviously I probably wanna do this. Maybe let's try 10. All right, that makes it a little too strong, but something like that. And let's bring this back. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring this back up and maybe drop it down just a little bit over like that. But then we can get, you know, a bit of like a drop shadow effect going there. So that's pretty cool. The other things that you can do with this, and I guess I really didn't go over how to uh, add these in. So let me just add this on so we can see this quick. JRTV, we go over into shading and then we can add in uh, eight shading elements and these can all be something completely different. So I'll add this in and by default, this is just going to have like a, a random, I, I use these as descriptions if it's something I'm gonna be con continuously reusing, but by default, this is just going to be a red outline. So it's using the outline and then it's just placing it red. Um, you can do that if you want. You can also have it in the background. But one thing that you'll notice here is if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that there's little gaps here. So, so that we don't have those gaps, what we would wanna do instead of having it uh, the level as character, we wanna switch that to, depending on what you have going on here, we could go to Word and it's going to fill it all in based on the word. So anytime that there is a space, it's going to break this box and then obviously create a new box. Uh, you could also switch this up so it's a line base, so it's all of the lines, or if you just want it to be a big block, you could also uh, have it on the text, which would then be if you have multi layers and you don't want them all on individual lines, you could you know switch that up. Cool thing with this is that be, each layer has its own complete tool set that you can do with it. So if you want it to, you could have this uh, little guy behind move in so it could slide in or you could have it go the other way around and then you could have the text slide on to it so there's a lot of different options obviously you could come over here and make this an outline and we'll see this in a second because I, I ended up doing something with this but one thing that you'll notice if you click this and this is at the default characters it's going to look horrible right so you obviously wouldn't want that you would want it to be line based or word based so that's pretty much that one come back here 
And the next one is the character level. So character level styling allows you to take each particular character and change all of its uh, attributes when it comes to appearance. So we could simply, as you can see here, when we zoom in here, we have different colors. We also have different fonts and we also have different um, sizes, right? So to do this, it's going to be just like all of the others. We're going to right click in here and then we're going to go down to character level styling. As we can see, we have an uh, animation here and then we have a modifier. So we click over here. And now with this, how this works, as we can see, we have these two little boxes, is you're actually going to highlight the characters that you wanna be working on now. So let's say these two characters, or four characters, excuse me, and then we could switch their font, right? So maybe we want it to be this font and we can change the sizing so that they're both the same. And then we could come over to shading and then we could change, okay, we want the, the color for this to be yellow. So then those will be yellow. One caveat to this is you're changing the values for that particular position of the characters. And what I mean by that is right now we have, uh, right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So five, six, seven, and eight are always going to have those values. This is where people get confused because if I was to add in other stuff, so if I put in here .com, it's still gonna look correct, right? But if I came into the middle of this, remember it's going to be characters five, six, seven, and eight for this particular uh, situation. And let's say we unclick that so that wasn't, you know, there we could come in. And if once we start to add characters, it's always going to be those positions that are going to have those modifications applied to it. Now the TV obviously is in a different position, so it's gonna have a completely different um, set of settings applied to it. It's never the particular character that we're changing, it's the, the position of the character that we're changing the values on. A lot of people get confused with that. I get a lot of emails asking um, questions about that because they're not completely, uh, they don't completely wrap their head around it. So that is the character level styling modifier. The next one, and let's just go in here, and this is actually more of an animation one. This is gonna be what's referred to as the follower modifier. So we, we set a particular value and then we can dictate how all of the other characters are going to follow that same animation. So clicking in here, if we come over here, same sort of deal, right clicking, going down to the follower. Now we can see it has an animation coming over here. And this is a path, so we don't wanna look at that one. We'll look right here in the follower. There's a couple of different things that I added in here. Um, the first one that you'll see is it's obviously motion blur, right? So that is just on the actual uh, node itself. All nodes that have any type of position move, you'll be able to add in motion blur. The actual follower aspect of this is we're just saying what we're going to be doing here. So if we come over to the actual follower, here is what we're going to be stating, stating what happens. So we have the range is all characters. That, I kinda have to put a little asterisk to that and I can explain that later here. Um, the order in which they're going to be following. So now, if, because the way in which this animation looks, obviously you wanna go from left to right in the characters that are there, how it's going to uh, happen, but we can switch that up and I'll show you here quickly. And then the delay, this is going to be, we can pick the delay between each character or the total delay um, from when the animation starts to when it ends. I like picking between each character because it just makes things a little easier. And then the delay is going to be based off of time. So that is going to be, you know, how many frames do you want that delay until the animation starts on the other character for whatever the keyframes are. So now that we have that, we're gonna go over into shading and because this is only one element, we're going to be doing the first element here. And this is just the actual text. I came down here to position and we're going to be changing the offset. So on the first one, the first keyframe here, we're gonna have it all the way over, right? So now, once we add the other keyframe here, which is for everything to be um, in the middle, the first keyframe, when this moves, it's going to move the first character. And then the next character is now going to have this animation applied. The next character is gonna have this animation applied and so on. So each one currently is one frame in delay. 
So that's how we get them to look like they're, you know, sliding over. I also, for this particular animation in here, I all I added in an easing curve, right? To get them to softly come over. So it looks really cool like that. Yeah, so that's kind of how that works. It's pretty easy. I guess I could come over here and show you this whole thing. So I could have this random characters. So now it's just going to be random characters that are coming over. Um, we have that. This looks kind of better if, if they're like falling because random characters will fall um, instead of sliding like left to right sort of deal. So that's kind of how that works. And then the other th the other little caveat, and I don't, I, I this has been around in Fusion forever. I don't know why this has never been fixed, but it still hasn't. It's when you go into, when you have this as all characters and you add a new line. Um, what you'll notice is when I come over here, for every line, it's going to leave off one character. I don't really get it. Right, so now we have two lines, so now it's leaving two characters behind. I don't understand why it does that, but it does. So what I just do in this sort of a situation here is I just add one space and then everything will look um, as it should, right? Oh, it's it's in random. Uh, for a second, I was like, why does it look like that? But it was it was still set on random characters. So it'll do all the first one and then all of the second row will come in. So yeah, that's pretty much that. And then for the um, for the motion blur, if you don't know, you just come over here into settings, motion blur, boom, turn it on, and then you'll get all these options to set the quality and so on. So then uh, a bunch of the things that we've worked on thus far all applied together. So here we are. It's you know, came on with a little follower and then we have a ring going around. Um, and this is all just within one little node and you can see it's just a, a couple of keyframes to, to get that started. And yeah, so for this, we just added in the follower modifier, right? So we come over here, here is the follower modifier. It's just named two because there's another one in the project. Um, and then down here, uh, this is the first element. What we're going to have it do is the opacity is coming on and we're also uh, reducing the blur, right? So it comes on from left to right uh, with the opacity and the blur to give that really soft look. And then the other thing is if we come over here into, wait, wait, where is that? Is it in here? Okay, yeah. So then the other thing I have is the shading. I have it um, for the second uh, element for the shading. I just have, the outline that we were previously talking about. And then after all of the text is on, we can see like right here, um, then the ring's going to come on. I have a gradient that then spins the map of the gradient to give that look like it's spinning around. And then I just have the map angle with it continuously spinning a keyframe all the way over here. So it looks like it's continuously going around. But yeah, so that's pretty much that. I know that uh, some people think like, oh, the text, you can change the color, maybe change the font, and that's kind of it. There are a lot of powerful things in here. So uh, yeah, I didn't know that my camera was frozen. That kind of sucks. But um, hopefully you guys found this interesting <laughs> outside of the camera being frozen. Uh, if you guys do want this project file, like I said earlier, this file will be available through the channel membership. So you guys can get that if you guys want to, you know, snoop around in this project file. But with that being said, that kind of concludes this one. Um, hopefully you guys found this interesting and the tools power, more powerful than what you previously thought for just the text tools in Fusion. But with that being said, my name's JR. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.